There we go. Well, everyone, welcome to Zoom with Style. And for those of you who don't know me, um, I am uh, Christina Parnforce. But I wanted to start by maybe uh, getting a little comic relief and looking at um, our situation. I found this um, little clip that I figured I wanted to share with you guys. So I'm gonna share my screen and maybe you will recognize yourselves. You can't beat me in this, bro. <laughs> Run it back. You can't beat me in this. You're trapped. Stop. Seriously. 19. How, oh. What are you? You go first. Yeah. Can you not hear me? Can you? Uh, we got all my roommates here on the Wi Fi. It's just kind of, I'll get that to you by EOD. You got it. You got a boss, no problem. Love you. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 okay, yeah, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Packed my lunch today. I don't know, just kind of, it's a routine. I just did it out of habit. Thanks for jumping on the call, everyone. Um, I know everyone's working remotely. Hey, you working remotely or remotely working? <laughs> I said, I said, are you working remotely? I will reach out to them, make sure we're kind of all aligned on the same page, and then I'll try to get that by the end of the day. Uh, guys, really quick, I'm getting a weird, just give me a sec. Dude, stop. I have to do this. We're making it work here at the Casa. Things are good. You, you guys be happy to know we're also a paperless office over here. <laughs> yeah, no toilet paper. <laughs> Can she not hear me? Can she not hear me? Stupid old boomer. There she is. Hi, Diane. Okay, great. So I just want to kind of run through oh, by this week, and that's going to be tough for us. We don't have a lot of bandwidth for that, but maybe next. That's cool. Did you just use the word bandwidth? Shut I'm, wor I'm working. What are you doing? What have you done today? I clipped eight of my toenails today. Two left. <laughs> Near together, aren't we? I hate you. We're going to fight by the end of the month. We both fight. Good talking to you, sir. We value you as a new client. Good to meet you. Bye-bye. <laughs> you got a meeting at 11 and nothing else to do for the month? I No, you, you have to... I, I don't think your camera's on. You have to press, do you see the button there? I'm going to send my boss every day a list of the things I accomplished. So help me out here. If it was real, I'd put, watched four episodes of Teen Jeopardy and took three showers. Now you guys can go ahead and play a game. I'm going to do the office happy hour. I'm going to pre-game it. Another fun poem from my boss. Hey there, team. Best wishes to you all. Let's kill it for our clients and kill germs with Lysol. <laughs> Let me write one back. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I don't care about any of you. Highs and lows for the week. Uh, high would be... Just knowing all you guys are safe and healthy, right? And Lowe's would be mute. Uh, frickin' doing this stupid, huh? Oh, wait, that, that was my roommate. What, dude? We're doing a fun hat day at work. Just still, go uh, go to your room or something. Yep, I'm on my fifth meeting of the day with my fridge. This vending machine rules. What do we got? Ready to set sail on today's tasks? Yeah. You wanna play some Warzone? Cool. I'll put on the mouse mover app. Keeps me active online. You're still paying me. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Uh, my outfit. The last time the North and South were in this much of a disagreement was the 1860s. Civil War. <laughs> outfit looks like an upside-down mullet. That's my spring break outfit. The longer it goes on, the worse it gets. <laughs> time to go to work. <sighs> oh. <laughs> These times. Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Zach Wendell, the author of the Bible study. All right. Anyone recognize themselves there? Hold on, I'm gonna get my audio. Yes, a little comic relief we need, right? In these during these times. Can you guys hear me? Thumbs up if you hear me. I have you all on mute. Okay, great. So welcome to our new normal. Um, and um, I think video conferencing, hopefully we very soon will meet in person and get to um, uh, communicate and touch and hug, but video conferencing is here to stay. I think a lot of companies have um, noticed how much easier and kind of more efficient it is with video conferencing. And also I think social distancing will be here for a long time until there is a vaccine out there. Um, and also more than 22 million Americans have a, 
have applied for unemployment over the, or up until now. So um, a lot of people have to pivot their uh, businesses and a lot of interviewing will happen through Zoom. Um, and you might be an interviewee or an interviewer, or you might want to pivot your business, but um, this is here to stay. And um, with this, all this new technology, there's also a lot of new challenges. Uh, one being technical, and I'm noticing I have a little unstable uh, network, um, but also, challenges on how to present ourselves in this new media. So before we go into that, or uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me for those of you that um, don't know me and um, why I think I might be able to help you or why I think I have any credibility in this area. So I am going to share my screen with you guys again. Here we go. So again, my name is Christina Parnforce. And just a little bit of background on me. Uh, my first career was in advertising and marketing. I was working at an advertising firm in Sweden. I was on the uh, strategic brand building site, helping brands kind of find their unique place in the market. Uh, but I was transferred to the U.S., uh, to New York City office, and that's how I ended up in the U.S. I'm a, I am born and raised Swede, uh, but I ended up in New York, and after slight burnout, almost, working in that field, I decided to go back to school and study my passion, which is interior design. And so I did that, and um, that brought me down to Florida, because down to Florida was tons of work and it was a building boom down here um and then i had tons of interior i started my interior design business down here which i've had for about 15 years and but then we had our last recession come around um and uh, the phone was not ringing off the hook anymore so we're talking 2009 um and i um had to pivot my business that time again and find an, another kind of source of income. So I became a director with Mary Kay, which taught me everything I needed to know about skincare and makeup and how, but more importantly, how you make someone feel beautiful and how you can raise someone's confidence just by um, tweaking a little bit here and there. Um, and then after a while, I wanted to do more than just working on face. I wanted to do um, the entire person. Um, so I certified through my very good friend, Cindy Porter, who some of you know, um, to be an image consultant, which means I teach women and some enlightened men how to um, dress according to their body shape, their best colors, um, and also about personal brand building, how you show up um, to really show your, uh, who you are. So I combined it all about two and a half years ago and I started Aesthetics and Style. And what I do is uh, elevating your style from the way you look to the way you live. So it's an integrative um, approach to style. That's a little bit about me, enough about me. Uh, we don't need to talk more. Let's get on to the subject. But what I do and why I, again, feel like this is an area where I do have some expertise is I work with people and environments. And this is what exactly what Zoom is. It is you and your environment. So first, before we go into details, I wanna talk a little bit about Zoom etiquette. So when I say Zoom, I mean any kind of video conferencing. So it can be other formats like um, uh, Skype, or um, it could be, um, FaceTime, any, any format out there that deals with video conferencing. So first of all, still hear me okay? Because I have some interference on my end, but still hear me okay? Great. Otherwise, uh, let me know. Um, and first of all, Zoom is, if you are in a professional Zoom setting, I'm not talking about happy hour or 
hanging out with friends and family. I'm talking about professional meeting. You should treat it like a live meeting. It is a professional sort of live meeting because it's not just on the phone, uh, but treat it the same way with the same respect. So the first thing I want you to look at is if you have your name in your little square and not just a phone number. I can't see you all right now, so I'm not sure. Uh, but make sure that you have your name and not just a phone number because you want uh, people that see you and you know we see these little squares you want them to put a, a name to your face so if you only have your phone number in there um, make sure you put your name I have my name and my company name as well as Faith James has the same the way you do that is you go into your zoom settings and you just put your first and last name as your first name. And then you put your company name or your title or whatever it is as your last name. And that way you get it all in on your screen. But it's important to, to not be anonymous here. You want them to, play, to see who you are. Um, the second thing I wanna talk about is, now I have muted you all. Uh, as a Zoom, as the host of the meeting, I can do that, but not everyone remembers to do that. Not every Zoom host remembers to do that. So muting yourself when you come into a Zoom meeting is very important if you're more than two people or more than three people probably. Uh, because the way the speaker view, you have gallery view and you have speaker view, but the way the speaker view works is that every time a sound is coming, a, a loud sound coming from someone, the, that's the person that's going to be in view. So if you have a speaker and then someone uh, coughs or someone barks in, in your room, all of a sudden you're going to pop up on the screen. So make sure that you mute yourself also so that it's not a lot of, of uh, interference. Um, and just to be on the safe side, because as again, the host can forget that sometimes. Then I want to talk about camera. And let me go to gallery view. And I'm happy to see that most of you have your cameras on. I love it. Um, and I really do think that 99.9% .9 of the time where you, when you are on a Zoom call, you should have your camera on. Um, Cause let's face it, if you are in a professional meeting, you don't put a bag over your head, do you? So that people can't see you. Same thing in a, in a Zoom call. You, people should see you. Um, oh, someone is saying I was stuck. okay. Uh, so camera should be on most of the time when you're on a call so that people can, and, and it's also, if you turn it off, it's almost like a peeping Tom. You know, you're looking at everyone else, but you don't want them to see you. And that's not fair. And also as anyone speaking, you want to see reactions, right? You want to, otherwise you're just talking to these black screens and that doesn't really, really do anything. So make sure you have your camera on most of the time. Now, if you need to excuse yourself, just like you would in a live meeting, you need to go to the bathroom or you need to, someone in your house is, needs to talk to you, of course you can put stop the video and, and um, turn your camera off. Uh, and when you do that, I'm gonna do that now just to uh, show you. When you do that, make sure you have a picture of yourself uh, as the sort of screensaver or as the um, uh, placeholder for when you stop your video. And of course, an updated picture of yourself. You don't want a 20 year old, year old picture because then when you turn the video on, you know, who are you kidding? you're there. So make sure that you have a picture of yourself that again will put a picture, a face to the name. So it doesn't look just look like a, um, a black square. Okay, I'm back. Um, now, we also have the little chat in the bottom here. If you need to say something, um, I, I hear here from Jill that I was frozen or dark for some time. I'm sorry about that. It's a little tricky when the whole world seems to be on Wi-Fi at the same time. 
Uh, but when you, if you, there's something you need to say, or if you have a comment about something, a question, you, there's a little chat room there. So you can just write a question and we will get to it at the end. Um, all right. Uh, and then another thing, very often you might need to be on Zoom on your phone. And that works just as well. Just make sure that you then have a tripod or something to hold the phone because you, you don't want it just propped up on something, it falls over because then everyone is going to see it. Everyone is going to get a little, um, everyone has to get a little uh, dizzy just looking at your screen falling over. So if you know that you're going to use Zoom mostly on your phone, get a little tripod, something to hold it. And if your computer, and you want to be on a computer, but it doesn't have a camera, um, a, a good investment is a, web, a good web camera. Although I did hear that web cameras are as hard to get a hold of as toilet paper right now, because I'm sure a lot of people working from home didn't have web cameras. Uh, but when we're back to normal, if you know that you're going to be doing this, getting a good camera is a good idea. And also, I know this is tough. Next part I want to talk about. Um, this is tough because uh, distractions around because we are working from home and our kids are home, our husbands are home, our dogs are home. Uh, but try to treat your uh, Zoom calls as you would any other meeting, almost like you put up a little sign next to your desk wherever you're sitting, do not disturb. Almost like if you know when you're uh, in the, the, the TV world, there's a red, uh, red light that goes on when someone is filming that you should treat it that way. So you try to uh, cut away of distractions. And be present when, and we can sort of forget because we're listening to someone and we forget that people see us and then all of a sudden we start looking at our phones or we start cleaning our office and things around the house that we need to do. But try to be present because again, people do see you or they should see you. And um, you wouldn't do these things in a, in a live meeting. So don't do it here. And be prepared. Know where you're going to take the call. Have the things you need on hand so you don't always have to leave the screen or say, oh, wait a minute, I'll be right back. Um, do you, again, you go to a meeting prepared, come to your Zoom call prepared. So, okay, those were some of the etiquettes. We're going to get into other um, aspects of what to think about in a little bit. Um, but uh, let's look at, let me share my screen with you guys. Uh, okay, so video conferencing is all about you and your environment. And everything in this environment speaks. Because when you look at um, the screens we all sit in, they are like billboards. And just like you zoom down the, the highway, you have three seconds in this media to make a first impression. Um, and why, and, and those of you that have worked with me or worked with Cindy knows too that um, changing this first impression takes a lot longer than the three seconds. Um, and this is three seconds here. In, in person, it's more like five to seven seconds. But because we are essentially flat and we are like a billboard, three se seconds is what you have to make that first impression. And why it takes so long to change it, about 10 encounters to change it, is because we don't want to be wrong. So we convince our brains that we were right the first time. That's how we work. So we are in our little billboards here, the square, and you and your environment is your billboard. And this is what everyone sees, and this is your video conferencing environment. You and the environment. Um, now let's talk about personal brand, because that's very important in this little environment too. Everything here speaks. Every little detail, say something. And people have time to sit and look at it. 
So personal brand, just like a strong brand, you know, if I say Nike or if I say Apple or if I say Zoom, um, those are all strong brands. And they are, a strong brand is always a great storyteller. Now, but us people, we have brands too. We have personal brands. It's not a question of if you have it or not, we all have a personal brand. The question is just, have you ever thought about it? And have you thought about what, you, what story your brand is telling? And again, it's very obvious when we sit in our little, um, in our little billboards, we do tell a story. So what is your brand saying about you? And when you start working with um, your personal brand, and if you haven't really thought about it before, um, it's usually divided into three different components. Who you are authentically, meaning the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, how you want to be seen by others, which is the aspirational aspect of your brand and kind of what we all wanna, wanna get to. And then you have the third one, which is how others actually see you, which is usually, um, you don't get a lot of information there because people don't volunteer the information. That's an area where I work a lot with my clients. So we, we kind of work on all of these aspects. And when the, the goal is to have all of those three components be one bubble. So who you are, how you want to be seen, and how people see you are all one and the same. Um, so let's do a little exercise. And we are going to do, so you thought you were just going to listen, but no, you're going to use your brains as well. I want you, I'm going to put up a little um, suggestion slide. And those of you that have worked with me or with Cindy know, have done this exercise before. But I want you all to think about or pick three adjectives. They don't have to be on this list, but these are just to kind of get you started. I want you to pick three adjectives that you want uh, people to describe you by when they see you on Zoom, that first impression. What would you like to, them to see pop into their head? Is it uh, approachable, authentic, and powerful? Or is it uh, confident, successful, and trendy? Whatever it is, pick three adjectives. And I'm going to give you about... I don't know, 30 minutes or so, uh, not 30 minutes, sorry, about 30, um, 30 seconds to, uh, to pick three. Just write them down, three that you would want. So aspirational parts, you would want them to think when they see you. So I don't have any Jeopardy music in the background, but just... Um, whatever they are, and only you know what you want your aspirational brand to be. And if you can't just hold it to three, yes, you are allowed to pick, to pick four. Okay, so hopefully, you have an idea of what you want those. Was that easy or hard? Good, bad? Um, hopefully you have an idea of what you want or have picked those three. Now, those three adjectives are the start of your personal brand. Of course, it's not everything, but it's the start. And I want you to keep those three adjectives in mind throughout because everything in this billboard here has to answer to those three adjectives. And because you're not live and moving about, everything here is gonna speak the same. So my background and me are gonna be just as important. When someone sees me and for the first time, I make that first impression and they don't wanna change it. So let's, so, so uh, the uh, video conferencing is you and the environment, as important, but I'm gonna split it up into, so let's talk about you first as a person and how you show up. Um, so what to wear and what not to wear maybe. So how you show up on screen. 
at, uh, during a video conferencing. Now, and just like this man here, um, the good news is that um, we only have to concentrate on the waist up. No need to go and do get pedicures, thank God, because that was a while ago. Um, but unless, of course, you're gonna stand up at some point, because then it's all gonna come, in, ooh, come into view. So be aware, but otherwise, uh, waist up is, is what you need to concentrate on. And the first thing you need to think about how you show up is what is appropriate for your industry or your field. Um, what is expected of people that see you? So you don't want your financial, um, fi financial planner to look like a hippie, probably. And you don't want your um, meditation coach or yoga instructor to look like a financial planner because that's going to throw you off. And that first impression, again, is going to throw, throw you off. Um, so think about that first, what, um, what is appropriate for the industry? Then again, those three adjectives, whatever you pick needs to, uh, be represented in you, in your person. Um, so the clothing, and it's not much you wear, but any, it needs to be represented in those three adjectives. Um, the color makes a big difference in video conferencing, color and contrast. And again, depending on how good the webcam is, but um, color, you really want to make sure your face pops because you want people to pay attention to what it is you're saying. Um, and so anything with a little bit of color will make it pop. And what color is best on you? Well, if you have worked with, with an image consultant or you maybe you did the... Um, those seasons they did um, years back when they um, gave you your colors. Uh, knowing what colors work best on you is really going to help you here because you know what complements you and you know what doesn't. Uh, contrast too. Contrast is the difference between your skin and your hair. So obviously I have really low contrast because it's the same color here. Um, now that's something you can increase because video will wash you out. So you might want to increase contrast a little extra. And how you do that can be um, through, yeah, clothing, a little bit of, of extra makeup, which we'll get into a little bit. Uh, for women and for men, you can do it by having glasses that have a little darker frames if you need to increase uh, contrast a little bit. But it's something to think about. Uh, in, in video situations. Accessories. A lot of us women, we like to wear jewelry, which is totally fine. Just make sure, and that's why I don't have bracelets on, because I speak a lot with my hands. So if I was wearing a lot of bangles, it would be extremely distracting for everyone. So make sure you don't have loud or noisy accessories. Um, and another thing to think about is shine. If you have lighting, which we'll speak more about, but straight ahead, anything that's very, very shiny can be very distracting as well. So uh, my earrings I have, um, they're gold, but they are matte, which works better for on, uh, on a head lighting. Glasses, we touched on it. Glasses, a lot of us do wear glasses, um, some all the time. Now that's something to, and sometimes you, need to wear glasses, of course, but glasses do give off a lot of glare. So be aware, if you're wearing glasses, make sure your lighting is a little bit higher up, or maybe when you are speaking, take your glasses off, if you, you know, still can see the screen, uh, because it can, be, it can be very distracting. And also, whatever you have straight ahead is gonna be seen in your glasses, so make sure you've uh, made your bed. Uh, but um, just to be aware of. Uh, hair and makeup, I touched on it lightly, and of course this is for women. Although on screen, men can cover up whatever they need to cover up as well. You won't see it as much. But you can go a little extra with makeup on screen because the, the, the video does wash you out. So you can put on a little extra makeup maybe a little extra eyebrows and lips is a great way to just increase um, 
contrast as well. So you can, you can just add a little more and you want people to pay attention to your eyes because that way they're going to listen to what you're saying. So you can do a little extra emphasis on your eyes when you are going to speak on screen. And then the last thing about how to show up is your body language. Body language is the second most important aspect of making a first impression. The first one is how you, how you look. The second one is your body language. And of course, in person is about how you walk or how you enter a room. But in Zoom too, think about how you're sitting. If you're slouching, if you're hanging with your head, um, it's gonna show your attitude. So just be aware that body language is very telling uh, in a visual uh, situation. All right, that was a little bit about you and how to show up. Now let's go to our environments. And let me go here. Yes, our environments around us. Hopefully this is not what your home office looks like right now. Could be, but thankfully we can't see that. Uh, but very important when you talk about your environment is to make sure that you control the environment. So let me just go to another, this clip is not as long, but it is really, really funny, or it's, it's true. This is not a satire, this is real life. So bear with me here. And let's look at this poor guy, what he has to live through. What will it mean for, uh, for the wider region? I just wonder what just shifting, shifting sands in the region, do you think relations with the north may change? Um, I would be surprised if they do. <laughs> the, um, pardon me. My apologies. <laughs> um, what will this be for the region? My apologies. North, um, yeah. Um, North can happen, right? These days, especially when everyone's home. So very important. Oh, sorry. I need to put my thank you thing. So very important to control your environment. Oh, can you hear me? You guys hear me? Okay. All right. Yeah, my microphone on my computer is not the best, so I. I use uh, the earphones. Um, uh, yeah, control your environment. Make sure you know. Don't sit in front of a door if you know that people could potentially walk in or walk through. Um, and, or in front of a mirror, have a mirror in the background and you see people moving around. Uh, so controlling the environment is the first and most important thing to do. The second one, is about camera placement. And I think this is where most people go wrong. You're having the camera way too low. I'm gonna show you a picture to see um, what I'm talking about here. If we look at this woman here, low camera angle, and it very easily happens because we're sitting either with our phones or our computers are down on the desk. And that gives you what we call the frog perspective. When you pretty much can see into your nostrils or you, and you see your neck and you bend your head and it's um, not the best angle for us to see. A, a great thing to, to just to kind of make sure you have it right is to look up if, if people can see the ceiling right above you, your camera angle is wrong. So the best camera angle is the one to the right, straight ahead. Um, that's where you want your, uh, your camera to be, straight ahead on you. Uh, and if you need to prop your, I mean, my computer is standing on a box of, um, of concealers. Who cares? We can't see that. So just prop it up do whatever, if you need to sit on a book or sit on whatever, doesn't matter. But having that camera straight ahead is where you want it to be. Um, uh, lighting, we touched on it a little bit. 
and it's hard in our home environments because we might not have the best lighting and we might just have mood lighting. Very often we have overhead lighting because we have recessed cans. Overhead lighting is not ideal for video because it casts shadows and it will give you a lot of shadows in your face. Um, the best lighting you can have is straight on lighting right from, so right behind your camera pretty much. Now natural light versus uh, uh, artificial light. Natural light is great, but very often around our windows in our houses, we have a lot of trees outside. So we don't get great natural light, even if we're sitting in front of a window. So a little bit of artificial light to add to the natural light is great. And where you want it, again, straight ahead. So if you see behind me in the mirror, I have a ring light. Those you can get from Amazon, they are not expensive. They are very cheap. You can also adjust the light so it's, you can get it whatever strength you want it. And it has a holder in it for uh, a phone if you're using your phone. So you get it all in one. Oh, Jill just said she ordered one. Yes, it's a great investment. I use mine all the time. I use it for when I do makeup too because it gives me great kind of uh, daylight. So a little bit of both. Um, Natural if you can, but definitely artificial. And the way, if you have an artificial light, like a ring light, you really can put your, um, your zoom area anywhere in your house. You just take the, the light with you. So I think that's a great, great investment. Um, and someone was saying, to, or I read in an article, that if you have a cat, check where the cat lies in your house, because that's usually the brightest and warmest space. So if you have a cat, you can follow the cat around and see. And now if you are using ring lights like me, uh, be aware. Now I'm sitting in front of a mirror, which is a little uh, risky, but I've sort of covered the ring light with my, my body. But if you know that you're going to move a lot, don't have a mirror behind you. Don't have artwork behind you too that has glass on it because that too is gonna reflect light. Uh, or, and again, your, your glasses can um, reflect light. Now don't sit, and I know, I see you, Wilma, you're sitting if, if, uh, with a window behind you, that's fine, because you have your blinds down. Don't sit right in front of a window where you can see straight out, because you're gonna be backlit, which means you're all gonna be in, in shadow, and you can't see your face. Um, so if you're sitting in front of a window, make sure you, you shade it somehow um, so that you can control that. Now, background. What to do with the background? And again, I think here, industry standards, very important, and your personal brand, very important. Now, a background can be too busy, meaning you get too much stuff going on in the back, and that will distract from you. Um, so then people are not in, um, people are not quite listening to what you're saying. But just as bad is if your background is too bare. If you got nothing going on in the background, if you just have a blank slate or blank piece of wall, it looks like you have no expertise, no opinions, and no experience. So make sure that you do have something that either, and depending a little bit about the call, depend, it, that, that tells who you are and, and what you do. And so for instance, if I was speaking to a potential interior design client, I might put up some accolades back there, maybe a college degree. Um, and if I talk to a style client, maybe I'll put up some more style images or maybe some before and after pictures. But you can tailor your background to who you're speaking to. And any background can become your Zoom space. You can tailor any space within the frame. So many of us don't have the luxury of having a designated area in your house to do Zoom or designated home office. You can make your dining table a Zoom area. And because we have these awesome 
commando strips. I hope you've all tried those. You can put hooks up on your walls and you can just place whatever you want it to be at that moment and then you just take it down for after the call. But you can really tailor your billboard, so to speak, to tell your story and, and make you look or, or sound, give, give you professional um, look. Um, and we talked before, no, another thing too I, do, I want to talk about, which I see a lot, and I actually saw it on TV this morning because everyone is doing um, reporting from home. Very often, the placement of what's behind you is too high, meaning you want the things in the background to be around level of your head. So if you see everything is kind of in this area, that means they're going to zoom in on you and listen to what you say. If everything is a little too high, then they're going to look on top of your head, not paying as much attention. So make sure it is around your um, head height. And we talked about the virtual backgrounds before you all came on. And I think I saw Christina had one now. That's something that Zoom offers. I think it's maybe not in all, uh, in the free versions, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, it, it's where you can superimpose a background. And the idea of that is great because then you don't need to worry about what's behind you. But I've done some tests with it. And you really need to know what you're doing or you really need to have a dedicated space if you're gonna do it. You need a green screen. And you can't just do a green um, piece of cloth because any movement, and you cannot have an air condition that comes down right above because that's gonna make it start moving. And all of a sudden that superimposed image starts moving, which is extremely distracting. And that kind of takes away from, from you as well. So you need a flat green screen taped on the wall or one of those uh, professional stands. Um, then it can work, but just make sure, you know, another thing to think about is hair when you're doing green screen, because if you have any sort of wave or anything where, you know, light comes through your hair, that's going to be cut out. So you can end up with a completely new hairstyle. So just do tr tries with it before you um, um, try it out for the first time. Again, be prepared. So try it out. Uh, but if it works, great. Then you don't need to worry so much about what's... And it's great if you can superimpose your, your logo or something like that. That's, uh, that's a great, great idea. Um, and with the background too, I think another kind of rule of thumb is if you work for yourself, if you are your brand or you have your own business, you can make it a little more personal because you are essentially, you know, you, you and your, your business you're talking about but you, you want to sell you. If you work for more a corporate job, maybe you want to make it a little more professional. So maybe a little more um, of accolades and, and um, um, other things. So just, just to think about, depending on what your, your situation is. All right. Christina, can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. Um, so I just moved my desk yesterday. Um, I have an office. I've been working via Zoom for years. So, you know, I've just kind of was like, oh, whatever. You know, it's, I didn't spend a lot of time uh, perfecting it. But my main issue was my desk was over on that side of the room. And so the window was, like you said, it was creating a shadow. And I had lights on me, but um, I really wanted to take advantage of the natural light that I am now. I've moved in front of the mm -hmm. window. However, behind me is, I want more privacy because mm -hmm. of my clients. So I'm just wondering, like, I, we literally just moved this desk like a half hour ago. Uh, so it's a little disheveled in the back, but I was going to use that screen, but I don't really like it. And I was wondering if you had an idea of a way that I could create privacy and also, um, you know, make it look nice behind me, like maybe a mm -hmm. screen or if you had any other idea. I don't yeah, really... Yeah, screen I or, or you can even wear... I mean, you could use anything because remember, whatever is seen in the screen is what you're going to see. Whatever is outside, no one's ever going to see. So if it's... You could do either curtain rods or you can even do a, a, a shower curtain for all 
I know, but some, yeah, you can use cloth, hang it on the wall to, and, and just make sure that the, the camera can't see attachments. Yes, any fabric, um, if you have a, a well, quilt, anything I, like that. I don't want it to, I want it to look nice in the room as well. Like when I'm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, no, it's, it's hard to just say, it, it, I gotta sort of look at each, I gotta look at it um, more in detail. But overall, anything you can block off with, with fabrics, with, um, and again, it depends on your brand and what it is you're, you're wanting to say. But screen can work. It can also be, can get a little busy, but just, it, it's more of a, of a case to case um, mm. um, basis. And I see someone uh, commented on plants. Yes, greenery is great to bring out, bring in into your, your billboard frame. I have two orchids because I love orchids and these were blooming. So why not take advantage? Uh, but, but greenery is always, always looks great um, and it gives you a little life it gives the the scene so to speak or your billboard a little life um okay so yeah uh jill we can talk more about that um uh, a little later but um overall anything use anything that's not visible or go outside of your screen that's why it's so important to test it out to make sure what is what can people see what can't they see you can't see that I have a couple of um, safety pins in the back, for instance. That's the beauty of uh, video conferencing. Uh, so now, what do we do now? Hold on, let me just, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. What do we do now? Maybe you feel like, oh, there's some good tips or, Help, I have no idea where to even start with this. Uh, but, and if that is the case, um, I am here to help. So what I do is my job is to help you tell the best visual story of who you are. That's what I do for a living. Um, I help my clients tell, even if it's within their environment, in their person, or both. Um, that's where uh, my area of expertise is. So just to see whether or not you feel that you need um, some help, uh, uh, you can ask yourself these questions. Would you like to better identify your personal brand and how it's received by others? Would you like to learn about your uh, personal body shape, your color family, your style, and how to best dress your personal attributes? Would you like to save money by going shopping in your own closet and get feedback on your existing outfits and how to make them best work for you? Because I, I, I do think in this time, we do not need to spend a bunch of money on new stuff because we do, most of us have, have what we need. Um, it just needs to be tweaked. And, and then would you like to step up your virtual presence and get help setting up and decorating your personal video conferencing area to make it look more professional? So those are some questions you, or questions I wanna ask you. And if you say yes to any of that, you might wanna take advantage of uh, what, I, what I do. Uh, so because you're on this call today, I wanted to do some fun offers because uh, yeah this is also the time to uh, give offers i think this time when money is tight for people so i'm gonna do i have two two kind different uh, uh, specials i want to talk to you about and um they're going to be valid that i have a, a kind of a time limit if you want to take advantage of it they're going to be available until monday so you have um, the weekend to think and of course you can reach out but the first one is the advanced style workshop and this is a virtual workshop not an in-person uh, we're going to do it through zoom i have max five people in each group uh, because i want to keep it personal um, each session is going to be we're going to have four group sessions they're going to be between one and one and a half hour depending on the segment and then you get one hour private session with me um, to go into more uh, personal aspects but what we talk about is that personal brand we touched on the three adjectives we dig deep into that 
uh, we really kind of set your personal brand and and what who you are and what you want to say and what people what you want people to think about you. Um, we write a personal mission statement because I think a lot of us work with it through our jobs, uh, but we haven't thought about it for our personal lives. And again, this is a good time to think about that because there's a lot of, of shifts in the world. Um, we, talk, we look at your personal body shape, your color, best color family, what colors to avoid, and we look at proportions and how important that is in, uh, how, when it comes to how you dress. Uh, how to accessorize, uh, how to def or would define your style category. We look, we, again, we go through your closet um, looking at, and I'm a big proponent of, of trying to use what it is you already have instead of shopping for new. Uh, but how we can tweak that, what you have. Um, I do a quick makeup tips and techniques as well, kind of what you can think about. For in person, this is not just Zoom world. This is because, you know, eventually we are going to walk out that door and into the real, real world. And, and then um, we also look at your, your space, your personal Zoom space and how to best work that. So there's a Zoom uh, aspect in this workshop as well. And you do get the Success Through Style book that was written by my very good friend, Cindy Porter. Uh, so that is the advanced style workshop that is usually $6.95 or will be $6.95. But if you are a fast action taker, um, it's going to be $3.95 for the whole, the whole five sessions. Uh, you, can, you can split payments up into two payments. Um, absolutely no problem. And the sessions, depending on how many participants I have, I might do a daytime session. I might do an evening session. All depends on um, who is participating, but we're hoping to start. I'm hoping to start the first session next end of next week That is the style workshop. So that works more than just uh, virtual that is virtual and real life situations and then I have one that's in the virtual world, which is the uh, private virtual training so I'm gonna do two 45 minute sessions with you uh, where we talk about you, what you're wearing, how you show up, but also a lot about your space, how to best um, um, put your space together. Um, and so we'll do a little bit of the, um, the, the clothing and, and how to show up and also your, um, your uh, space. So it will be all about that billboard we talked about. That is uh, uh, worth or will cost $4.95, uh, $3.95, but it is a special for $2.45. So that is my uh, little specials. And again, don't need to let me know now. You can think about it over the weekend. And um, if you have any questions about any of that, please just reach out. Um, I will be happy to answer. So I want you to look at your, can everyone see themselves in their little squares? So um, I just want you to look at yourself, look at your billboard and ask yourself, does it represent who you are? Is it telling a good story of who you are and what you do or what you have to offer? Um, because again, we have three seconds to make that first impression. So make sure you make the seconds count. And that, my friends, is all I had. And we have some time for questions. I know there's been, uh, any, uh, anyone else? Yes? Faith? Faith, Faith go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Christina. So I just wanted to reiterate, reinforce, uh, because this literally just happened yesterday. So I was on a panel, sort of an expert panel of about 20, 30 women who came from all different walks of life. You know, some were energy healers, some were financial, some were business coaches, uh, etc. And I was telling Christine about this in, in prep for this session. There was one woman who came on and said she was a, a, a like a yes coach and she helps people get to six and seven figures and build online businesses. And I want to tell you the power within the visual imagery. I do not want you to take what Christina is saying for granted. That somebody has said there is no way that 
they would hire her. Just in three seconds, and based on looking, as Christina says, on this billboard, do you present in the way that you are saying you can help the other person? So for example, if I look at Christina, right? Christina's brand is all about sort of like the visual imagery and just this sort of, you know, confidence and success and style and design and, and modern um, aesthetics. Does she represent that? If she was saying that's who she was, absolutely. So I don't want you to diminish the value of what, she, what she's saying because sometimes familiarity breeds contempt. And that was an example. And this, this woman, this was broadcasted in about a group that had about 320,000 women. So just think about in that moment that you are broadcasting, you have lift up your brand antenna and you are now broadcasting this picture trumps whatever you had to say. She could have been the most brilliant, most inspired, uh, most uh, thought provoking coach on the planet. But when you have just a few moments and you look and people are looking at, is this person really walking the walk? Are they in alignment? Are they uh, authentically showing up? Do I believe? So it's very important uh, that we really take hold of this and let Christina help you get your environment to this point. I'm actually doing a session, a webinar next week, and I'd say this to you because it's with a global recruiter who's going to be talking about what recruiters are looking for and how they're going to be judging you. And please understand that your visual appearance is, is very important. I'm gonna leave you with the last thing, Christina, and I just, I just wanted to, I just felt called to tell everybody this. I just don't want you to leave here thinking, oh, I'll just get to that at some point. The, the time is absolutely now, your visual representation. So I did a proposal for a nonprofit, uh, heard back from her, she said, you're just, I want you to know that your proposal was the most expensive, but when I looked at it, so again, here comes the visual power. When I looked at it, I immediately said, this is what the director of the nonprofit said. This chick knows what she's talking about. She'd never met me a day in her life. My picture was nowhere on that thing. So it's so important, guys. I know I get the benefit of having working um, uh, relations with Christina all the time. She literally lifts me up to a next level. So if I'm a brand strategist and I get value, I want you to understand it's, it's super valuable. So the floor is yours. Thank you for such a warm and wonderful session. It was easy to understand and but powerfully communicated. Thanks, Christina. Well, thank you. Christina, I have yes. a question and yes. also a, a comment. My comment, because I do a lot on Zoom, particularly now, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the body language, the other thing that I find is that I, I try really hard to sit up straighter. Mm -hmm. And you talked about that a little bit. And the other mm -hmm. thing I try to do is lean in. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a little bit more sort of like a power powerful pose when you are leaning in like this versus back like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's yeah. another tip that yeah. I would have for people yep. that I've just sort of stumbled on myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I have that light. So, yep. but that's, yep. that's to Cindy. So you're, you're <laughs> sitting, Cindy convinced yeah. me to do yep. the, to, to do because the Because you're sitting against the window, but because you have uh, uh, on or straight ahead lighting, it works. It works. And yep. so this is not my permanent. So that, that this leads me to my question. Mm -hmm. I love being here because I'm basically in a, my kitchens right there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in the center of the house. I love the windows. I love the plants. Like I'm comfortable in this spot, but it's not really fair to everybody else in the house. So <laughs> we are converting a room upstairs to an office for me. Mm -hmm. And right now it's just got plain builder white walls, which I don't, so my son has agreed to paint for me. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you have a suggestion in terms of, you know, tapping on your interior design piece, <laughs> color um, that would be on brand for me, which is um, creative, sporty, authentic. Um, you know, I'm an educator. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and confidence and intelligence. So those are things that are important to project for me well, well just from the, from you know top of my head i think when yes the builder white is never great on anyone or a, a great background unless you you decorate it with a lot of, of color and things um i think a warm soft gray light but warm gray not cool because you mm -hmm. don't want it to be too um austere but a warmer gray um light 
it's a great neutral. And it's also right now, grays are the new beige, you know, it's a mm. neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you can't really go wrong. And most things that you add to a warm gray is going to look good. So whatever your artwork is, whatever, it's going to look good. But it, okay. uh, that's top of my head. That's what I would, would go with. Soft, warm gray. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions that pop up? I mean, I see your, your little chats. I love that you guys were chatting together. Um, yeah. I hope you guys got some good hands-on tips. And um, yeah, I think that, oh, one o'clock, right on the dot. I said we were going to be an hour. I am so good with keeping time. It's very Swedish to be on time, just so you know. Uh, bye, girls. Thank you for being on. Uh, and boys, I think we had some men too. Uh, and have a great weekend. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.